ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستغفره ونستعينه ونستهديه ونشكره ونتوب اليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وحبيبه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد عباد الله فإني أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله العلي القدير القائل إن سورة المائدة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأنزلنا إليك الكتاب بالحق مصدقا لما بين يديه من الكتاب ومهيمنا عليه فاحكم بينهم بما أنزل الله ولا تتبع أهواءهم ولا تتبع أهواءهم عما جاءك من الحق لكل جعلنا منكم شرعة ومنهاجا ولو شاء الله لجعلكم أمة واحدة ولكن ليبلوكم فيما آتاكم الله سبحانه وتعالى says in chapter 5 سورة المائدة verse 48 and we have revealed to you the book with the truth the book meaning the Quran verifying what is before it of the book and guardian over it therefore judge between them by what Allah has revealed so sovereignty goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not follow their low desires to turn away from the truth and has come that has come to you for every one of you did we appoint a law and a way and if Allah had pleased he would have made you all a single people but he might try you in what he gave you so today we hear a lot of uh, negative talk regarding uh, the verse Sharia law so whenever uh, you hear Sharia law a lot of Muslims you find them duck and because it become, became all of a sudden a negative word and and it's been used lately in the primaries over here and when you ask the non-muslims and i don't blame the non-muslims for it when you ask them what is sharia law right away they tell you cut the hand stoning lashing and these things so they took they cancelled everything in islam and they put sharia law on only the smallest part of it which is the punishment laws and that is due to a lot of it is because of the practices of few countries or few entities who apply Sharia law from its tail end and they tamper with the Sharia law they they apply the punishment laws where it's not applicable or they apply it in its improper place so they tamper with the Sharia but does that give the non-Muslims are doing their job so I'm not going to talk about them but, but does, does that give the seculars and the liberals the right to go and say we don't want Islam in our life. We want to disconnect Islam from the state and connect state from Islam. Now Allah in, in, in all the Madani surahs, so after the last 10 years of the revelation, all talk about Sharia law, all talks about ruling by the, by, uh, the rule of Allah and that the sovereignty is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the ayat is in Surah Yusuf, where Allah says, "In al-hukmu illa lillah, amra illa ta'budu illa iyyah, dalik al-din al-qayyim." That Allah says that the judgment, the sovereignty, the rule is to Allah. He has ordained that you should not worship but Him. So He, the ulama over here and mufassirin, when you open the uh, tafsir for this ayah, and this ayah is in Surah Yusuf, verse forty. And many ayat in Madani surahs about ruling by the rule of Allah, including uh, Surah Al-Ma'idah. Uh, surah Al-Ma'idah is very comprehensive about Sharia law. In this ayah, the ulama is saying that Allah attached the rule, the ruling by Him to the monotheism of uh, worship, Tawheed al uluhiyyah So if you choose any other rule, any other rule beside the rule of Allah, that means you are competing with Allah in Tawheed al uluhiyyah in the monotheism of worship. And because of that, in many ayat, including Surah Al-Ma'idah, it mentions those who do not rule by the rule of Allah, those are the kafirs. Those who do not rule by the rule of Allah, those are the oppressors. Those who do not rule by the rule of Allah, those are the mischief. But a lot of people in, uh, in, 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 uh, in the Muslim world, what they want is, all they want is the worship part and the ritual part of it. 
And this is what Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah. أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ فَمَا جَزَاءُ مَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا خِزْيًا فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يُرَدُّونَ إِلَى شَدِّ الْعَذَابِ وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ Do you believe part of the book and do you reject the rest? But what is the reward for those among you who, get, who behave like this but disgrace in this life? And on the day of judgment they shall be consigned to the most grievous penalty for Allah is not unmindful of what you do. So it's absolutely rejected by Allah to pick and choose what you like from Islam. And also Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam said that Islam is in an authentic hadith in Muslim and Bukhari so it's muttafaq alayha agreed upon <laughs> that Islam is built on five pillars. So you cannot go and say the five pillars is here but I want to build my system over here. Islam is built on these five pillars including the social structure, the economic structure, the political structure, the educational structure and every other structure in Islam. It's all inclusive within the same building. You cannot say I want the pillars here and I want the building here. And hence the disgraceful life that we've been having for the past at least 100 years and I'm counting from the time of the uh, division of the Muslim Ummah since 1916. So there are people who want to Christianize Islam and they want to Judaize Islam within the Muslim Ummah itself. And this is absolutely not allowed because you are, whoever does that is competing with Allah in rulership, is competing with Allah in the monotheism of, of uh, uh, worship. Also these, these tyrants or these seculars who, 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 wants, who do not want to rule by the rule of Allah, what track records they have to show for themselves for the past at least a hundred years. I just put a couple of days ago the results of the World Economic Forum of the Competitiveness Report for 2014-2015 for every aspect of life, from religion all the way to education, social, every aspect of life. Okay, where do the Muslim world rank? All the way to the end. Because of what? Because Islam is ruling? No, Islam hasn't been around since 1916. Yes, Al-Khilafah was destroyed in 24, but most of the Muslim world has been uh, divided and broken up and occupied since 1916. Some of them even before that, like Egypt and Algeria from the 1800s. Okay, so some of them over 100 years haven't been ruling it, uh, with Islam. So based on what they say, Islam is not working. They don't even have a good track record for themselves. So it's totally different. Islam is a perfect religion and it's totally different when few individuals or group or tyrants want to uh, uh, pick and choose from Islam and you go and blame Islam for, for, their, for their mistakes. But alhamdulillah, it didn't work. their fascism didn't work. Their liberalism and secularism didn't work like it worked in Europe and, and uh, the States or, or Australia or what we call the civilized world, world. Because had it worked, most of us would not even be practicing Islam or outside of the realm of Islam. So we hate the way they rule, but subhanAllah, it prevented us from the fitna of re leaving our religion. Because our religion, it hasn't been practiced as a system for over a hundred years. So what is this governing ruling of religion as part of, of as Muslims? We need to know how is, uh, our religion governs and what is Sharia law. And what we taught the, the so-called civilized world, we gave them our civilization and, and uh, our advancement and we took from them the mentality of medieval Europe, which I'm about to prove in a minute. So governing and ruling in Islam, and this is agreed upon in all madhab and all scholars, what I'm about to tell you. It's centralized, just like the US government has a federal government, it's centralized. Whereas administration is decentralized, just like the US government, each state has its own rules and regulations. And the method of us choosing a ruler, whatever you want to call him, a president, a khalifa, a king, whatever you want to call him, the way we choose a ruler is by a word we call bay'a. And bay'a is a contract between the people and the Ummah and the Muslim are, are the people or the citizens of the state. And this bay'ah takes place either directly through a direct vote or through a parliament that the Muslims uh, elected. And we are the first, the Islam is the first civilized 
system of life that came with the concept of checks and balances. This is what's taken from us because we are the first ones to come with the different branches of governing. The first branch is the executive branch, with a, which is you know, the president or the king or the khalifa with his ministers. And the second branch is the legislative branch. That's where the fuqaha, the ulama, are in there to make sure that the rule of Allah and the sunnah is being uh, uh, applied. So this is the, 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 the branch that makes sure the sovereignty of Allah is being implemented. The judicial branch, even if the, 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 the ruler picks them, it has to be, they have to be approved uh, by the parliament, just like we do here in the States. Okay, and the parliament is called, our parliament called Sultat al muraqaba wa taqweem the branch of monitoring and evaluation. This is where Ahl al-Shura is in, this is where Ahl al-Hal wal are, are in. These are the ones that elect, if we're going to go through the parliament, elect the Khalifa, if we are not going directly to elect the ruler. And the last branch with some eras was part of the parliament and some other eras was an independent entity, which is the financial in the branch. So the, the ruler does not have authority over the financial plan. All of them work in harmony for checks and balances to avoid the corruption of the ruler, to avoid the corruption of the parliament and the legislative branch and all these things. So in Islam, the source of sovereignty goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from, uh, from the Quran and the Sunnah. But the source of authority, Masdar al-Sultat, goes from the people we elect our uh, uh, representative. So there is no sovereignty and there is no guardianship over one individual or over uh, uh, one party over the entire Ummah. So the, but what happened now, the difference what happened between us and the Europeans or the, the states, they made the sovereignty, the source of sovereignty and the source of authority by the people and hence they legitimized prostitution, drugs, and, and porn and so on and so forth. But us, we kept the balance between the authority of Allah and the uh, 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 authority of uh, the uh, uh, people. So what is the definition of Sharia from the linguistic part of it? Sharia in Arabic language means, has two meanings. Has the meaning of it's the source of water and has the meaning of being the uh, clear straight path. The fuqaha, the ulama, the scholars use it as it's the laws that Allah enacted in the Quran and what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa taught us in the sunnah regarding the tawheed, the social justice, judicial justice, economic justice, political justice and so on and so forth. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Jathiyah ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاكَ عَلَى شَرِيعَةٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْرِ فَاتَّبِعْهَا وَلَا تَتَّبِعْهَا هُوَا الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ and finally, O Muhammad, we have set you on a way by which the clear straight path may be fulfilled. And that is the Sharia. Ah. So follow this way, the Sharia ah way. And follow not the likes and dislikes of those who do not know the truth. And from that, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah <coughs> said, Sharia ah from Shara'a, ah, Shiratan, it's the same meaning, it's the same root is the source of Islamic rules and regulation that stems from every Muslim in his actions, in his saying, and in his creed, and does not deviate from it, just like the river does not deviate from its course. So it's the source of life to us, the Sharia. But the most beautiful definition of Sharia law came from Imam Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah. He said, as Sharia mabnaha wa asasuha, على الحكم ومصالح العباد شريعة in its foundation and its structure is based on wisdom and public interest وهي عدل كلها ورحمة كلها وحكمة كلها ومصلحة كلها شريعة is all about justice so when you say Islam you have, attached, you have to attach Islam to justice شريعة is all about justice all about mercy all about wisdom and all about common good فكل مسألة خرجت من العدل إلى الجوري Every opinion that takes sharia from justice to injustice ومن الرحمة إلى ضدها From being about mercy to its opposite ومن الحكمة إلى العبث From being about wisdom To being about nonsense and futility and tampering with sharia law And this is what's happening in the Muslim world 
ومن المصلحة إلى المفسدة from being about common good to being about mischief فليست من الشريعة then this is not sharia وان ادخلت فيها بالتأويل even if it's claimed to be according to some interpretation so if if the if interpretation come up with 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 an explanation that is not justice that that has no mercy in it it's completely not sharia law it's completely unjust completely unjust and what's this what is the objectives of this sharia law what is the objective of the sovereignty of allah to achieve, to achieve the objectives of life where the ulama divided it into three categories the necessities, the needs, and the perfections المصالح التحسينية the necessities which I spoke about before when I spoke about human rights the five basic ones are the preservation of religion that's every basic right for every human being in the state Muslim or not Muslim the preservation of a human life every human life is valuable Muslim or non-Muslim the preservation of intellect, the right of education, the right to, to, to get rid of the intoxications that we have in our uh, communities, in our countries. The preservation of lineage, progeny, the right to be able to get married, to protect our wives and our kids. The preservation of wealth, the right to have a job, the right to protect our properties, and so on and so forth. These basic necessities that God given right to every human being, these are not even implemented under the rules of the rebels and the seculars. Okay? But that's why a lot of, a lot of scholars you hear, we go to non-Muslim countries where the Muslims are minorities, yet we find Islam. So over here, it's a shame that we are, even though as a second class citizens, with the Islamophobia, we have more justice here than back home. Because we not only have these basic necessities, we went to the next level. We are even able to fulfill our needs. We are able even, a lot of us, mashallah, to fulfill, to perfect our lives. We need more cars, we need more bigger houses, and so on and so forth. We need more businesses. People back home, they are not even able to fulfill the first basic five necessities of life. And that's why we say, it's actually, I'm experiencing Sharia law, and a lot of Muslims saying, experiencing Sharia law in non-Muslim non -Muslim countries. But these objectives cannot be in direct collision with the rules of Islam. So you have some Arab countries, for example, they legitimize the uh, uh, production of liquor in their country. So it encourages tourism. But that's a direct... A collision with the commands of Allah and Quran and Sunnah, so that's technically not allowed. But they, that's that's what they do. So 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 notice now the rights of Allah or the sovereignty of Allah. Notice that the means and the means have to be where it's Islamic, legal, moral, and ethical Islamically to achieve these objectives of life for the betterment of all mankind. So we can achieve what we can achieve justice. So we can satisfy Allah, so Allah is satisfied with us. So who's going to protect this, the harmony of this circular motion? What are we revolving around? Are we revolving around individuals or are we revolving around our creed? And the ulama and the scholar said the only way, the only force that makes sure of the harmony of this circular motion is for us to revolve around our creed, our tawheed in its purest Form and we do not deviate uh, uh, from it. And notice that the objectives of, of these Islams or the goals of these Islams is in complete harmony with our nature. It completes us and not only as Muslims as, as for every citizen living under, under the uh, uh, Islamic uh, state or Islamic country. And that's why Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said if the, a rulership or a rule with Islam, along with oppression, will not last. But a rule with kufr, non-Muslim country, like we have here, or Europe, or Australia, or the civilized world, with justice, will last. So Islam in the bottom line, or what we seek is justice. Because justice is what's in our innate nature. And remember what al-Hadith of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam when he says one of the people that Allah will shade uh, in the day of judgment is the Imam Adil. 
the uh, just uh, ruler. أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفار الرحيم. Ask Allah for forgiveness. He's the most forgiving, the most merciful. الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, in Quran in Surah uh, Al-Umran وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Do not and do not feel weak and inferior and do not and not in grieving and you shall have the upper hand if you are believers. Well, Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam said إِنَّ أَخْوَفَ مَا أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ الْأَئِمَّ الْمُضُلُّونَ that the most thing that I fear for you are those Imams who lead you to the falsehood. Based on what I explained about the definition, the, in, in the simplicity uh, or the summarization of it and the, the definition of the Islamic laws or Sharia law and the harmony of it and how it's incomparable with our innate nature, let's try to put the dots on the letters over here who is applying what and where is it where are we experiencing this whether in the muslim world or in the non-muslim world i'm gonna start with the easy group the khawarish terrorists of our time and these are the groups that i labeled before as group c these are the illegitimate daughters of isis qaeda boko haram taliban and their other illegitimate sisters from a different father hizb shaitan of lebanon Ansar al-Shaytan of Yemen, that's the Houthis, the Revolutionary Guard and the besiege of, of Iran and all the sectarian militias who, that came from Afghanistan, Pakistan and Iraq to ethnically cleanse Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah in Iraq and, Ira and, and Syria. All these people, all these groups, terrorist Khawarij group, are attached to themselves the word Islam. There is nothing Islamic about them. They legitimize the killing of innocent people they legitimize the burning of people, they legitimize the, 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 the raping of women, and the, 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 the disunity of the Ummah, like what we have in, in, in Yemen, Iraq, and Syria. This is caused by these Khawarij people, so there is nothing justice about them. I refuse to, war, to use the word Islam and these groups in the same sentence, because there is nothing Islamic about them, period. They are the Khawarij terrorists of our time. This is group C. And their mothers in group A are the tyrants and rulers of our times and the liberals and the uh, uh, seculars and the scholars of the uh, sultans, including al-wali al al-faqih. The problem with these people that they made sovereignty, the source of sovereignty, instead of being to Allah, they made the source of sovereignty to the king, to the general, to the, uh, to the uh, president, to the wali al-faqih, and the source of authority also to them. So there is no difference between them and the Pope at the, at, uh, uh, during the Christian uh, time when, they, when the church was in charge of the country. And that's why Europeans want to divide or separate religion from state because of the corruption of the uh, church. Over here, our Muslim leaders, they want to separate Islam from life because of the corruption of the politicians. Because Islam will stop them from their corruption. Over here in Islam, we said we revolve around the Aqidah, we revolve around our creed, around our Tawheed. Over here in, in Group A, these tyrants who have all the economic power and all the military and all the firepower, they revolve around an individual, whether that individual is the wali al-faqih or that the individual is the president or the king or the general, instead of revolving around our aqidah. So what happens because of that? We have religious tyranny and dictatorship in the Muslim world. Now group C, even though the media make it look like because of Sharia law, and they don't even apply Sharia law, they tamper with Sharia law, they make us look bad, they represent less than 0.2% of the Muslim population, even though they try to make them like we are the, the, the majority of Muslims like that. Unfortunately, Group A have a lot of supporters. Almost 20% of the Muslims are in this group. 
But the majority of us are in group B, the, the Islam coming out of the box is Islam of the middle. All these names that they come up, political Islam, beautiful Islam, Sufi Islam, Sunni Islam, Shia Islam, uh, whatever names, I even lose track with all these names. There is no such a thing. Islam is one Islam came out of the box from Quran and Sunnah, Islam of the middle. Anyone wants to tamper with it is not Islamic, is outside of it. It went, it's like uh, Sheikh Al Islam ibn Tamiya said, it's like a river uh, deviated from its course. There is no such a thing. Islam is what's in the Quran and the Sunnah. And what the Quran and Sunnah is silent about, we have scholars to come up with explanation for it, for to fulfill the objectives to reach justice for all mankind. That is Islam. There is no reason to complicate matters. And this is why I end, I'm ending the identity, the Islamic identity with this subject, because if we don't revive this dream of reviving our Islamic identity according to the teaching of the Quran and the Sunnah and implement it where it's in the middle, which is the majority of us group B, B people, where, where the West looking at us as, as if we don't exist, and the, the Khawarij of group C look at us as Kafirs, and the group A, because we, don't, we refuse their tyranny, they either look at us as Khawarij or as Kafirs, okay? But we are the majority. A lot of us are the silent majority. If we don't revive this identity in us, one of the two things is going to happen, especially to our kids. We're going to be part of someone else's dream in group A or group C, God forbid. Now, a group A, yeah, because the West consider them, they are the moderates. That's why I refuse to use the word moderate. There is nothing moderate about tyranny. There is nothing moderate about a Muslim drinking liquor or fornicating or uh, collecting his, uh, his uh, uh, money from interest or haram money. There is nothing moderate about this group in group A. There is nothing moderate about grave worshipping in group A, the innovators of group A. And ob obviously the, the literalist and the Khawarish terrorist of group C, there is nothing moderate about them either, right? But they want us to move toward group A. Now our kids are going to refuse to go to these tyrants. But if we don't enlist in them the correct Islamic education, what's going to happen to them, God forbid, they're going to join ISIS and company. And that's why they are very successful in recruiting the kids. Okay, because our failure and our uh, 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 lack of strategy and leadership in teaching our kids the true Islamic identity, the Islam of the middle. So you cannot just go home and forget about it. Okay, because if you do, we, we're going to lose our kids. And just as a reminder, these Khawarij of, 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 of Group C, all these terrorists, all through their history, I, I'm not worried about them because they negate our nature. Because all through their history, they never give victory to a religion, they never defeated an enemy, and they never had a state in their life. Okay, so they will be defeated, but only when us Group B wake up and have the correct strategy and practice Islam the way Rasul alayhi salatu was salam uh, taught it to us and the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in the Quran. And I remind you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in the Quran to send our prayers on Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he got, said in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا آمنا بما أنزلت واتبعنا الرسول فاكتبنا مع الشاهدين اللهم انصر من نصر دين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واجعلنا منهم اللهم اخذل من خذل دين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجعلنا منهم اللهم ارفع البلاء عن أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم لا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل بلاءنا في أولادنا يا رب العالمين ربي بما أنعمت علي فلم أكون ظهيرا للمجرمين سبحان ربنا رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة